Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So what I want to build today in this short video is a device which will hopefully be quite useful to us in future electrochemistry videos. And what I want to build is some way of measuring uh, the charge that we put through an electrolytic cell. Specifically, I think it's called a coulometer or a voltmeter, voltmeter. I'm not really sure. Basically, if you're working with an electrolytic cell, uh, the most important number that you can deal with is the number of electrons that you put actually through uh, the electrolysis reaction, because that's exactly uh, what's going to tell you uh, how much reaction you've done with the cell. It's going to be useful for a couple of reasons. Uh, we'll start with this example uh, right here. What I'm doing is just simple electrolysis of a copper sulfate solution. Uh, with a platinum anode and a copper cathode in order to generate uh, sulfuric acid. Now this electrolysis reaction is particularly easy because we can tell when it's done. Uh, the copper sulfate in solution is very, very blue. It's very obvious when you still have some left in the beaker. Uh, but once we continue electrolyzing for a long enough period of time, uh, we'll be left with a clear solution and we'll know that that's pure sulfuric acid. But you can imagine if copper sulfate, say, didn't have a color, we wouldn't have much of an indication of when the reaction is done. A coulometer uh, would be very useful in that sense uh, because it would tell us, say we put in 450 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate, that's what I've done here. Theoretically, what we would need is uh, a little under four moles of electrons in order to uh, actually convert all of that copper sulfate into sulfuric acid. And with a coulometer, we'd be able to measure that quantity of charge the second thing that a coulometer will be very useful for is working out the efficiency of an electrolytic cell. But what we would be able to do if we had one hooked up to this cell that I'm running right now is we'd be able to run it for as much time as we need to completely react all of the copper sulfate and then uh, based on the amount of charge that we would put through the cell we'd be able to work out uh, the efficiency Basically, with a coulometer, we'll be able to work with some real numbers uh, rather than just guesswork. And in that case, we'll be doing actual science. Now, I know calculating uh, the amount of charge that we've put through a cell, given a certain current and a certain amount of time, isn't really all that hard. You just multiply the number of seconds uh, by the amperage that you're putting through the cell, and that'll give you the number of coulombs that you've passed through the cell and then you can divide by the Faraday constant to get the number of moles of electrons that you've put through the cell. So it's really not all that hard, but I'm kind of lazy. Uh, I want a machine to do it for me. Plus, you know, current changes over time and building a machine like this uh, will eliminate the need for estimation in terms of the current that we put through. Hopefully, what we can put together is something uh, that maybe works with an Arduino or something. Uh, that'd be really nice then we can just hook it on to uh, the end of the power supply in series with our cell and it'll just count the charge as it's flowing through now we're back inside we can start putting it together uh, all we're really going to need is an arduino uh, i've also got this little current sensor and then we're just going to want some kind of uh, readout so we can see track the number of electrons that are flowing through. What I have is this little counter module thing that came out of an old tape deck or something like that. So you spin this uh, little stick here and what it does is just counts up and that's exactly what we need for uh, a coulometer because all we're gonna be doing is counting. And anyway, I think this will look quite cool as the readout for the thing, having it be like an analog uh, readout rather than just a simple digital seven segment display. But to make it work, obviously we need some way of driving uh, this little module here electronically. We need to interface it with uh, the Arduino somehow. So what I've got is a little motor next to it, a stepper motor, which I salvaged from a printer. I've just hooked it up to the geared module uh, with a couple of scrap pieces of acrylic. So it's not very high quality. Uh, it's one of the less good things that I've ever built, but 
uh, it'll all go away inside a box and we won't have to look at this atrocity in the future but anyway the motor I've just got hooked on a belt uh, which drives the little stick that drives uh, the numbers here and of course I didn't have a stepper motor driver either but I did have a few MOSFETs and they do just as well I'm hoping uh, to drive our really low power 5 volt stepper motor We can also reset uh, the device with this button right here while it's in motion, which is pretty cool. I won't go into too much detail uh, as to how I've done my Arduino code here, which I've just finished. Basically, it's just a converter that converts the current from our uh, device over here into millimoles per second of electrons, and then uh, another conversion factor in order to run the motor at the correct rate to make this turn at the same rate as there are millimoles flowing. But whatever, um, I've got one amp of current flowing in to our sensor over here. Uh, so when we upload our new code, uh, what we should see is at one amp, uh, what should be flowing through our thing is around about 20 millimoles every 32 minutes. So hopefully uh, once we upload the code, in 32 minutes, we should see uh, this uh, reader read 20. After remembering the difference between seconds and milliseconds, uh, I finally have the code uploaded onto the Arduino, and I think it's all running well. Just started the counter. Uh, we have that one amp running through our current sensor as before. And like I said, in 32 minutes, it should count up to 20 if our calibration is correct. And 32 minutes on, we see pretty much exactly what we want to see. Uh, that's a little bit over 20 millimoles of electrons. Perfectly accurate enough for rough estimates that we want to be using in future electrolysis runs. So uh, it's looking good. I'll probably leave it here for this video. And in my own time, I'll put all this in a box. And hopefully next time I do a fancy electrolysis video, making something or other, we will see this device on the output of the power supply, counting our charge flowing through our cell. But till then, see you later.